Today, I am going to walk you through how to get GPT-5 to act as an agent for you simply by prompting. Now, there's three examples that I'm going to walk through. And by the end of this video, what you'll be able to do is accomplish three things. Number one, you will be able to prompt basically agentically coding a front-end app within GPT-5. Number two, you will be able to finish a long-term project within minutes of something that would take, on average, probably four to five hours to do if done manually. In number three, I am going to show you how to do automation from end to end for a pretty complex task through a combination of different SOPs and different areas within a project. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ryan Staley, and I have helped thousands of people, specifically go-to-market executives, with AI transformation so they can multiply the capacity, become a 2x, 3x, even 10x employee in terms of what they're doing. So happy to be with you today, and I'm going to let's get right into it, okay? So I'm going to share my screen, and I know that there's been a lot of aggravation and frustration with GPT-5. I think the hype, hype world was, I don't know, overboard in terms of what the expectations were for it. However, one of the things that I realized is like, there's really specific ways you got to use this model if you want to have asymmetrical results. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to walk you through and basically identify well, all the way to the beginning on how we create effectively a full project prompt that's created. So what I did here is I'm like, all right, act like a chief revenue strategic advisor for a full stack generative AI platform writer. And what I did is I pasted in some things about them. They just had a $200 million series C round and gave additional details within there, right? So that was all context. Now, what I said is I said, systematically analyze the entire funnel from lead generation. Don't stop at service metrics. Now, remember that. I'm gonna go back to that and we'll pull up the exact prompt sheet I have that I designed specifically for GPT-5 with the 12 cheat codes that they have, okay? This is really, really critical because a lot of people don't know how to use this yet, right? So only complete your analysis when you have five specific revenue optimization strategies. Once again, remember this language, only complete your analysis. These are simple words, but they're gonna have a massive impact on how the model works with you, okay? So what you're gonna see here is a plan, and it's like, all right, um, what I asked is how can we 2X ARR in 36 months? Uh, they're probably about 200, 300 million if I had a guess. So um, what you're gonna see is it gives a snapshot with the ground truth, it gives gold math, it goes through funnel diagnostics and KPR targets, everywhere from top of funnel, middle funnel, pipeline, sales velocity. And it, what it's starting to do is highlight ideal target rates that they want to hit. Now, the other thing that was really interesting is it has five plays specifically for revenue impact or projected impact. They have the P PQL engine, which is really like product behavior. And so it's really interesting on how they're um, basically PQL, for those of you who don't know, is product qualified lead. So what that means, if, if it's a if it's a product like growth company or a user could sign up, then basically those are identified and understood and qualified and then reached out to if they're appropriate. So that was one cloud marketplace. Co-sell was two vertical agent packages, which is really interesting uh, to package different agent blueprints that they have. And then on top of it, POV factory and expansion machine. Okay. So um, in addition, what it gave is an operating model scorecard and why that fits. Now, what you're going to see here is at the end, it's also asking like, hey, do you want me to do more for you, right? I said, yeah, please drop the one page plan. So what it does is it'll then put it in a Canvas style format and just gives a one pager of that entire summary, which you can see it's it's pretty solid and you can edit it within here. So that's step number one. So do that whole project that would take multiple hours to do. Now, what I'm gonna do is uncover the insights behind that, right? One of the things that you're like, all right, great, Ryan, this is just another prompt. But what I'm gonna walk you through is a GPT-5 framework prompting cheat sheet that you could get actually, if you click on the link below, sorry about that, I had run into an issue. If you click on the link below, you can get access to this. And what you're going to see is what we're focusing on is the agentic persistence framework. There's all these other frameworks within here, uh, reasoning, instruction, verbos verbosity, context grounding, self-reflection, fixed tool, multi-turn, structured XML prompting, meta prompting, and parameter prompt hybrid control. Very technically orientated. These are taken directly from what OpenAI uh, has about how to prompt with this model. But what I did is I took it 10 levels deeper and used an agent to identify and create use patterns specifically for this, for sales, marketing, and then even a chief revenue officer prompt, okay? 
So what I want to show you in here is this, and we're going to really focus on the agentic persistence framework today. What you're seeing within here is what it has, very specific language. Keep going until you have complete profiles. Never stop when you uncover uncertainty. Research deeper until you find the information. Only terminate when you have actual intelligence for all targets, okay? Now, the caution with this is if you are using an API plan, which means you're paying with credits, um, I don't know if I would necessarily use this language. I would test this, um, but set limits because otherwise it could go on for a really long time um, and burn a lot. If you're on a, a normal paid account, like a $20 plus user or a Teams user or pro, uh, you don't have to worry about it. Okay, another example, as you can see in here, only terminate when you have concrete action. Don't stop at surface metrics, only complete your analysis when you have the targeted outcomes. So what is in here as well as I have the actual prompt template, but then I have an example of what the output looks like, all right? So these are, like I said, three different areas, and I'm gonna walk you through one more in terms of marketing so you could see what that full cam campaign looked at. But if you want this sheet, there'll be a link in the comments below grab that, drop your email, I'll shoot it over to you, and then you'll have access to it, okay? So let's go back to, I'm gonna finish off and show you a really quick marketing campaign analysis. And I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it because I just went through kind of the advisory template, but I thought this was really good um, when we mapped out. And so, as you can see, I, I dropped in the prompt from there. However, I said, let's do a LinkedIn organic campaign, uh, AI skill adoption, I even spilled it wrong, with a $10,000 budget, right? So basically what it did is it mapped out an entire campaign in terms of the snapshot, creative and format optimization, like how to do this and ship this within 10 to 12 weeks, everything from format matrix to persona prompt per persona and problem. At the same time, it's got distribution and audience building and then conversion OS, right? Like it even goes into like how to update your profile and what to do to optimize it for conversion. I thought that was really good because in the past, I haven't seen these models get this deep and I think a big part of it is because, and by the way, these prompts took a little bit longer to run. I think on average, they were taking like three to four minutes to run. And that was in the thinking mode at see with GPT-5. So um, on top of it too, it's got this as well in terms of like what to ask, project enablement, budget, implementation timelines, and then even KPI and criteria. Now, I didn't even ask it. I said, send me your last eight week, it asked to send the last eight to 12 weeks of LinkedIn post exports. And I'll, I'll replace the estimates with actuals. I thought that was pretty solid as well. Okay, so that's number two. Number three is I'm gonna go through an automation and end capability. Now, this isn't very different than what I just showed you. However, it's got way more in it. And I wanna show you exactly how I created the prompt to do this so that you could, oops, sorry, it updated, right? It, so you could do this as well, very simply. And it was kind of funny because it was one of those posts on LinkedIn where it's basically like, yeah, I did this, 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 this. And if you want a post, comment, right? And basically what it'll do from there is it'll identify, um, you know, if you comment on it, I'll give you access to it. And for some reason, it's not populated now, which is awesome. So, um, but what you're gonna see is, let's get this automation and All right, boom, I was just about to pause. I'm like, I can't make you wait. People can't wait. All right, I'm gonna go all the way to the top. Now, what I decided to do is I said, all right, I want to design a top 1% of 1% prompt for GPT-5, and I need you to do this in a single pass. Once again, I fat fingered it, right? <laughs> so um, basically what you're seeing is have deep market recon with web and Reddit, pains, jobs to be done, triggers, objection, resource strategy, angle matrix, backlog of priorities, outline drafts, voice transfer, fact check, compliance, channel packaging, experiment AB with learning mode, okay? So, what I did is here, I need you to do this in a single pass. So that's the instruction. So that's that key language that I mentioned. And what I did is I actually put that in a GPT Pro on accident. But what it did is it created this, this very involved prompt. Now, GPT Pro is only available for Pro users, GPT-5 Pro. It's the model that takes a little bit longer. But as you can see, this is very involved in terms of like what was created with this prompt. Now, what you're going to see, and I said, it's got a pre-built pre starter block. And I said, yeah, do a pre-filled starter block. And so it effectively did this for what it knows about me with my company and, and what it's seen. This is where I got really impressed with like the deep market recon. So it's got buying triggers, pains, jobs to be done, decision criteria, objections, and then even like preferred channels, which I thought was really good. And then keywords as well. And it's got CRO, CMO, VP of Rev Ops, right? So I thought that was really like sharp with the way that it did it. Now at the same time, it also gave examples of like 
specific panes and job to be scoring samples. Like this would take me a really long time to surface. And frankly, if I didn't put this in this way, I probably wouldn't think of all the details that it's posting up, right? It's got triggers, right? Where it's got um, title change, earnings call, job post, PE prep, like all these are solid. And I know from real world experience, what I've seen work with my clients, um, objections. And then uh, it's got, <laughs> that was just number one. Right, that was, it was just number one. So it did this whole capability, everything from like the type to the value narrative to the efforts. Um, I was blown away with this prompt in terms of, and it's got an angle matrix, stop AI, AI theater, PE playbook EBITDA via enablement, right? So it's like, um, I was really impressed with that, deliberately, deliberately in backlog and even prioritized it with rice, which is uh, a mechanism to use to, to really identify what to focus on. And so um, it identifies that uh, production pipeline with basically SOPs and quality gates, channel packaging, uh, six week schedule. And I didn't even dig into this. This is a CSV that I could export, UTM builder, experiment plan. And a lot of this might be over your head because it's over my head with some of it, right? But at the same time, like the packaging, the sourcing, the UL, URLs um, is really freaking good. Okay, so that's the automation aspect. And like, like I said, I think the core key, like cheat code is like, first of all, I asked to design a top 1% of 1% prompt specific for the model. And I said, do it in a single pass. So that's the key takeaway. And then boom, I just I, I, I identified what I wanted it to do. So if you look at this, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven step, like deep structured process that I basically automated and did within one prompt. And that took three minutes to create the prompt and probably another three minutes to create it. So I was blown away with that. Okay, last but not least, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go into coding, all right? And within the coding, like I, by natural trade, uh, am not a coder. This is not what I um, have been classically trained on. However, as I mentioned, and as you know from watching my other videos, I spent a lot of time on AI tools and, and other capabilities. So what you're seeing here is I'm like, all right, build me a beautiful ROI tracker for AI skill adoption for ChatGPT front end in React, all right? So what I would say is like, I use the thinking model. I didn't use the pro, so it's available to anybody. Um, basically what you also have to do, and I just want to give you context on this, is there's different modes. You have to do this in Canvas, okay? If you want to code, you have to do it in Canvas. Um, it's The model picker is supposed to identify uh, what you need to, which, which model you want. I'm going to show you a bonus, by the way, at the end of this video. Um, but if you do it in Canvas, it automatically knows to go to. So what happened is, and this is what was wild. I actually did this, like, like I had breakfast this morning. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try this out. And then I let it run while I was basically, like, getting ready for work, taking a shower, all that. And it didn't take too long. But as you could see, it built out all these different lines of code. So by the time I was done, I think it was 677 lines of code. Okay, pretty freaking wild. So what happened was after you have the code and you jump in here, there's a button that says run code and the run code will show you what it looks like. Now, when I ran this example, I got an error. So I was like, ah, oh, great. This is like classic, like you run something, you build something, you have an error, okay? What happened was it, it asked me after I did this a couple of questions, like, do you want me to tailor it, right? Do you want me to, and this is based on some of the things that, like I focus on in my business with the AI transformation sprints I do. Um, and I, I said, yeah, add scenario, compare chart, one pager, tell fat fingered it again. Like, so what it did is it created this in React and it walked through. And basically what happened is when I ran it, and I'm going to click run code, when I ran it, um, there's a little alert that popped up saying there was an error. If you click on that like little alert, it'll ask you if you want it to fix it. So I just said, click it, fix it. And then it went through every single line of code, edited it, and then updated it. And I'll show you what came out. So it's pretty impressed with this. Um, like I said, I'm not a coder. However, you know, if, if this is something you're interested in, I'm starting to experiment and there's ways where we could throw this in like Emergent or Replit to have this instantly connected to the back end. So as you can see, this is the ROI kind of front end that I developed. And like I said, there's a lot that I would need to go through and update. So this, the quality is there. But I think with a simple short shot capability where I change the scenario, um, I could create a one pager from it. I could identify the team size, right? Um, so I thought that was like, you know, pretty, pretty impressive. The hours per week, 
fully loaded, time save, cost, all these different capabilities. And as you can see, it's like interactive. So we have in here like different scenarios, comparison, monthly cash flow benefits, and other areas, right? So that was um, basically what we created today. And I was like, this is pretty cool. I know GPT-5 is getting a bum rap. Now, I did tell you I was going to share with you a bonus. So um, before I do that, let me put a bow on this. So, so basically, like I said, real key is using the agentic language or the appropriate language for five. It is an insanely intelligent model if you know how to use it specifically. Number two is like uh, leverage it. Um, and basically, after you use the language, use the prompt structures. Like I said, in the chat thread, there'll be a link. Um, then you get access to, to resources like this. And I'm going to start including on a, on a weekly basis for when I work with folks, or I should say with the content I create. And then number three is the coding. Start simple, but then once you do that, have it checked. And then last but not least, I'm going to show you the bonus. Okay. So if we go into settings, this is the bonus idea that you might be very excited about. One of the complaints about GPT-5 is that like a lot of folks and power users, people that follow this, um, used to like to look through all the models. Well, what you're going to see here is there's a capability because there was such an uproar over what happened where people were like literally emotionally attached to some of the models. So if you go in here, what you're going to see is system settings. So you could have different accents to kind of customize it on what you want. You could have different system themes. Now, the other area that I thought was interesting, I clicked on this little tab to show legacy models because I sometimes want to toggle back and forth to the models versus having ChatGPT decide for me what to use because I know what's best in different situations. So once you click that, check this. You go to legacy models and you can access whichever one you want. All right, so that's a little bonus I have for you. Appreciate you sharing your time with me today because I don't take it lightly. I know it's super valuable, but I hope this was value packed. Uh, for you so that you now understand how to use GP5, GPT-5 agentically better than most people know how to use um, any kind of AI tool at all. So if you start leveraging this consistently, you'll be the top 1% of 1% users. And that's what I'm here to share with you and be a part of. So once again, thanks for joining me. Feel free to grab those prompts. If not, I will see you all on the next video.